¡Chinga! ¡La migra! ¡Chinga! ¡La migra! ¡Chinga, chinga, chinga! ¡La migra, la migra, la migra! Eso es todo, gracias. ¡La placa! ¡La migra! ¡La misma placa! Can you tell us a little bit about what brings you out? And well, I'm here with Mi Gente. Uh, you, you connected us. I think it's, I think it's a great uh, movement. We are here to shut down Operation Streamline. We're here to shut down sessions. We're here to end family separation um, and, and highlight all the suffering that's happening in America right now. Obviously, these issues have been a problem for as long as the United States has, has been around, but what, what specifically in this moment uh, feels important uh, to you? Now more than ever, uh, are we seeing it in, in, in such a way that is so blatant, so in our faces, um, and, and now we have the attention of so many people um, that I think that it would be such a missed opportunity not to come together, not to continue this conversation, and not to, and not to fight for these people who are being affected. Our hope is that this will, one, impact San Diego, show that people in California and across the country are against this program, Operation Streamline, and two, we want to pivot the national messaging. Like I said, a lot of people don't understand that immigrants are being uh, criminalized, right, and that the mass incarceration and mass criminalization of our people is one and the same. We've allowed things to get this bad, right, and so it is our time to take a stance and move things away from that. It's just devastating to see. A lot of the people that are coming to the border seeking asylum from perpetuated violence and colonization in those countries, a lot caused or exacerbated by America, they're caged and shackled and not given the due process, even the legal process that is available to them right now and even before was based on the discretion of whoever they meet at the border. And now it's there's not even any discretion. There's literally zero tolerance. In order for us to change the dominant narratives when it comes to people of color, immigrants, refugees, asylum seekers, is for us to realize the privilege that we have, take a step back, listen. What is important in this moment and why is it important to you? Well, this moment, I mean, look at these kids. And I think about all the kids who are separated from their parents. And yes, this has been going on a long time, but never at this velocity. It's been uh, amped up so much with this administration. And we all know that we were asleep before in the previous administrations when there were issues with immigration. But now we're awake and now we're doing something. I have this shirt that's justice for Roxana, who was a trans woman from Honduras, uh, migrated, left, you know, fleeing violence, persecution, um, only to find herself in a very violent situation at Customs Border Patrol, and then also inside a detention facility in Cibola, New Mexico. She died in custody, in ICE custody. It shows how our humanity is chipped away by institutions like ICE. years old and we were living in fear every day before that my brother was deported when he was 18 and basically uh, it, it just ruined his life it ruined all of our lives um, people don't understand what family separation means to families it is severely damaging uh, our, our, our mental health our, our emotional well-being is uh, harm we're completely traumatized and uh, it's irresponsible it really is it's irresponsible and and it's a sign, obviously, that there is a lack of, of caring for humanity when you do this to families. Um, you wouldn't know if you are on the other side. You don't know what it's like to have your family separated. No one is
they were even remotely as upset about the injustices that are happening in the place where they work, that they're a part of, then we would have a system that looks entirely different where families and people and people of color would be valued. Um, so for me, that was, a, that was a stark sort of image too. These white folks were like, I, I can't believe it. I can't just cross anywhere I want. Yeah, welcome to the fucking club. <laughs> I haven't gone to these, you know, and I, I, I think a lot of it has scared me, to be honest. And I think that when I talk to people who feel like they can't change things, they listen to that rhetoric of what's a march going to do? What is, what, you know, what, what's a march going to You educate yourself at a march. I learned so much today. I learned so much today. And I have my own personal story that I've been sharing that I've been using as, um, as my form of activism, as my form of representation. But I saw something different today, um, just seeing those kids out there, you know, break, you know, d doing actual statements like breaking down that wall. I'm inspired. You know, people say that, oh, well, you need more than, it, than inspiration. But no, that you can, you can start there. Yeah. You can start there. I'm inspired by that, um, but I do, I really do hope that resonated with people that this is just the beginning. This is not, you don't show up to an action uh, march and then think you've done the work. I'm taking all this inspiration with me um, in order to encourage people to uplift those voices and be intersectional and not just make it a one, one ethnic issue. Right. Um, because it's not. Sometimes you, you let yourself, you let that little voice in your head say that what you're doing really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take here today and say, what I'm doing does matter. And I'm gonna take that so that I can have strength for the next time that I do speak on this issue. And that's every day. That's, a, that's, that's work that you have to do every day. I always say, well, I'm not an activist full time. Fuck that. I am an activist full time. I'm a human being full time. So I have to be an activist full time. <laughs> Pero manda, te recuerdo más.